Welcome back, my Charles. As you would have seen, some of you have now are very far ahead because you were able to get onto Google Classroom and watch my Zoom lessons. And thank you for joining me on Zoom during the lockdown period. And thank you for working so hard on the Google Classroom during this lockdown period. You will be rewarded with good marks if you keep up that effort. Then there are some of you who could not or did not get onto Google Classroom and you did not get onto the Zoom lessons when we had settled Zoom lessons. So you need to go play catch up at this stage. To be able to do this, you need to go onto my Google Classroom. Let me show you. So classroom.google.com. When you're on my Google Classroom, what you need to do is, if you haven't been on Google Classroom before, you need to insert the code. But most of you I know are on the Google Classroom, if you have registered for my class. If you go to the stream, work from the top, and then go down to the bottom and do the work and work backwards. Just remember to check everything that's at the top every time because every time we post new material for you to do, like videos, worksheets and notes, it will be at the top of the screen. You also need to do the classwork under the classwork section. There's lots of tests here. So please go and do these tests and complete these tests. They are short questions and will especially help you with section A of the paper. Alternatively, you can also go on to LMS if you are at the school and you can then get the videos and the things from the school LMS. I'm going to place it under the notes section so you go to your resources and you go and check what is there and I'm posting currently under term 3 for the resources. Let us now get to the 2017 paper. So today's video will be on the 2017 Northwest prelim paper and so this is the paper that I gave last week, Thursday or Friday for you to do. I also posted the memo on these, but you need to understand why and where we get the answers that we are getting. And so that's going to be very important, that you need to understand why and where are we getting all of the answers. Otherwise, you will not be able to answer the question the moment that, that it's changed a bit. People, first question is your multiple choice questions and they're asking you which hormone regulates the salt concentration in the body and that is aldosterone. Let me just show you how this works so that we know why it is aldosterone. Just changing my screen quickly. There we go. So Aldosterone is secreted by the bile kidneys or the adrenal glands as we also call it. So if this is the kidney and then we have the ureter going in there, we've got blood going into the kidney and if we take a look at the blood going into the kidney, it's filtering blood into the kidney. All of the blood goes into the kidney, it's filtered and then goes back into the blood and leaves the kidney. When we take a look at this, then urine is then going down here and going into the bladder. When we take a look at this at a microscopic level, what is going to happen is inside the kidney, we have the nephrons. And there are thousands of nephrons inside the kidney. And the nephron contains certain parts. This is work that you've done in grade 10 and 11. Um, inside the nephron, we've got an arteriole coming in, which is a small blood vessel. And we also then have one leaving, which is thinner than the one coming in. 
We then have blood flowing into this. We call this the glomerulus. Glomerulus. And all of the fluid is then pressurized with some of the salts into my Bowman's capsule. So into my Bowman's capsule, I've now got all of the fluid then that it was in the blood with some salts going into the nephron. What then happens is that my blood vessel, as it leaves, it circles around these tubules, the proximal and distal tubules, and reabsorbs some of that fluid together with some of the salts. And this is where aldosterone comes in. Aldosterone, if I wanted to absorb more of the salt content in the body, I need to then put more salt back into that blood. So which means that in these tubules, larger holes are forming so that more of that salt can be reabsorbed. And then what also happens, as the salt leaves, to go back into the blood, we are going to then reabsorb water as well because the water is going to then follow the salt. Okay, so that's the functioning of aldosterone. Aldosterone. Now let's get back to the paper. Second question, the laying of eggs which hatch outside the body is known as ovipary. Why is it ovipary? Remember I told you to use the O, the O looks like an egg and so ovipary for an egg, if I lay an egg. The corpus lithium is a structure which forms Ladies and gentlemen, during or after, just after, ovulation. B, after ovulation. Why after ovulation? Because the corpus lithium forms after I've released the egg cell. So my gravian follicle becomes the corpus lithium or the yellow body. Study the list below. Use of indigenous plants for medical, medicinal purposes. Use of wood to generate heat energy and poverty and shortage of food. Which of the following may be reasons for the exploitation of natural resources? Okay, so indigenous plants for medicinal purposes. Okay, yes. If we take plants out of nature uh, to use as medicine. Use of wood to generate heat energy. Yes, that may be an exploitation of our natural resources. And poverty and shortage of food, ladies and gentlemen, that doesn't quite match what, what I am wanting then. So, but the correct answer for this one, 1.1.4, is... Okay, so 1.1.4, study the list below. Use of indigenous plants for medicinal purposes use of wood to generate heat energy, and then poverty and shortage of food. Which of the following may be reasons for the exploitation of our natural resources? So if I take plants out of nature for medicinal purposes, we can exploit nature. Use of wood to generate energy, yes, those trees were growing, and now I'm cutting them off to burn the wood to get heat. So that's exploitation of natural resources. Poverty and shortage of food. So if I now go and in nature I go and get food from nature and I don't do it wisely and I use everything that there is, yes, because I was poor and I couldn't afford to buy food or farm food, then that would cause the exploitation of nature. So in this case, the correct answer is 1, 2, and 3. And so it is C. The diagram below shows two visual defects, short-sightedness and long-sightedness. 
Which statement below best describes the visual defect in the diagrams? The shape of the eyeball is shorter than usual in the diagram. No, it's longer. There I can see. Because my focus area um, is in front of the retina. So it's not shorter, it's longer. The focal point lies behind the retina in diagram A. No, there's the focal point over there and it lies in front of the retina. Then it says to us that the focal point lies in front of the retina in diagram B. That's also incorrect. There's your focal point and that's behind the retina. And then the lens is less convex in diagram B. And that is correct because if you take a look at where it's viewing um, I need a less convex lens to be able to see at so such a short distance from the eye and it's not happening correctly so the correct answer over there is D 1.1.6 1 .1 images of objects moving towards a person are clearly focused on the retina when the ciliary muscles contract, ciliary muscles contract. And what I want you to be careful, that's A, what I want you to be careful over here is confusing the two concepts and two muscles involved with eye adjustments. In eye adjustments, we have pupillary reflex and we have accommodation. Please know each one. Pupillary reflex has to do with the amount of light that is coming into the eye, whether I'm in dim light or bright light. And then accommodation has to do with whether things are far away from me or close to me. And in this case, with accommodation, we are talking about the ciliary muscles, which controls uh, the, the thickness of the lens. Please don't confuse these two things, the ciliary and the circular muscles. Circular muscles are there for pupillary reflex, they're part of the iris, and they, the circular muscles, when they contract, they would narrow down, they would close up the pupil. The ciliary muscles contract when we have accommodation, and as they contract, what happens is the ligaments become slack, when the ligaments become slack, the lens becomes more convex and so that we can focus better on the retina at the back of the eye. Know the pupillary reflex like a little rhyme and memorize it that way as well as the accommodation and you'll do well because somewhere we're going to get these questions. It's going to score you about four, anything between four and six marks in the exam. Next question, 1.1.7. A cell with 17 chromosomes. Okay, 17 chromosomes. Let's think. 17 chromosomes. Okay, so that's not an even number. That's an odd number. That says to me that, remember, we have diploid chromosomes in the normal body cell. So this has to be a gamete. This has to be a gamete because it's an odd number. Because in any normal body cell, I would have an even number or a diploid number of chromosomes. So the correct answer here is A. One point one point eight. Which one of the following increases water availability? Water availability. High population density? No, can't be. If I have a high population density, they're going to use more water, so that will not increase water availability. Drought? No, because then there's less water, there's less rain, so I'm not going to get increase the water availability. Boreholes? Yes! If I have boreholes, I can get into the groundwater and have more available water to the people. Last one is overgrazing. No, if we overgraze, what happens is that we have water run down 
and when we get water run down we decrease the water availability so 1.8 the correct answer is C which of the following brings about the onset of flowering in plants we're going to leave 1.1.9 now we haven't discussed plant hormones yet 1.1.10 what would happen if thyroxin is injected into a healthy person? People, the metabolic thyroxin controls your metabolic rate. And if I increase the number of thyroxin... Okay, so what would happen if thyroxin is injected into a healthy person? B is the correct answer because thyroxin controls the metabolic rate. Controls the metabolic rate. Now, if we take a look at that, uh, then the metabolic rate will be increased if thyroxin is injected. Let us then take a look at why not the rest of the answers. I'm going to go to my notebook and then go through each of these and tell you why not, why it's not A, C or D. Okay, now A says to us that it is secreting more TSH. It will not secrete more TSH because TSH and thyroxine is in a negative feedback loop. So the pituitary gland, which is part, uh, is which is at the bottom of the brain, secretes TSH, and it tells the thyroid, thyroid, which is the butterfly-shaped uh, gland uh, around the area of your Adam's apple. It tells the thyroid gland to secrete thyroxine and so it it activates the secretion of thyroxine but then when thyroxine is is there then it also tells the pituitary gland it inhibits the release of TSH because it says no I'm doing my job you don't have to tell me to do my job so that's why we call it a, a negative feedback loop the one negatively affects the other or the release of the other one and the moment that thyroxine levels drop then TH levels will start rising again telling the thyroid gland you need to do your job and then in turn thyroid will start increasing the thyro uh, thyroxine levels again which will tell the pituitary gland now stop telling me what to do I am doing my job okay so the two glands they talk to one another in what we call a negative feedback loop then in question C in question C uh, answer C it says to me the following muscular activity will decrease muscular activity will decrease no the muscular activity is going to increase why is the muscular activity going to increase because the metabolic rate is increasing and if the metabolic rate is increasing, we're going to have a higher muscular activity. Then it says in D, glucose will be converted into glycogen. Why would I want to convert glucose into glycogen to store it if my metabolism is high? I need the energy. So do I need glycogen? No, I don't need glycogen. I need glucose. So it's the other way around. The glycogen is going to be converted back into glucose how does it do that it does that by releasing glucagon 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 the hormone glucagon and now please don't confuse glycogen and glucagon you, um, or mix these two words the moment you mix these two words they are wrong and it's going to be marked wrong that is especially where spelling is going to count okay so that was question 1.1 of this paper Please, if you haven't completed this paper yet, complete the rest of the paper. We're going to finish now the rest of question one tomorrow in tomorrow's lesson. And then we're going to hopefully continue with some of question two as well. 
There's also some notes on homeostasis that you need to complete. Please complete those um, and then study, work hard and catch up for those of you that are behind. Please, Matrix. Thank you for listening to this lesson.